Hello guys, this is a full guide on how to make a full stack React application. We are gonna use multiple technologies like React, Node.js, Docker, Postgres and Prisma. The app contains multiple features such as authentication, interaction between the users, dark and light mode and crude functionality. On the right side you can see a preview of the application. You can see how I logged in, I can see my stats and in this particular account I'm patient. You can see the graphs and all my information. Now before we start let's dive deeper into the application. Of course you can get the full scope of the application in the description below. Now in the login page I can type my email and my password. If the password and the email are invalid we get an error. Of course we have a forgot password page and a register page. In the register page of course we can create a new account. All the input fields are validated and if we don't meet all the requirements the errors will be shown to us. Now let's create a new account and it will automatically redirect us to my home page. In the home page we can see our latest information. We can see the heart rate, the temperature, the blood pressure, our risk factors, the medicines that a doctor prescribed to us and of course our doctors. In the left side we have the navigation bar and we can see more data. Of course we can select a doctor, we can change the password and we can search in the search bar all the pages. On the right side we can sign out or go to the settings page. Now let's sign up as a doctor. Let's quickly type all the information and change the role to doctor. Let's preview our app in smaller screens, in mobile and in tablet. We can change the theme, of course. Now we have different pages in the doctor dashboard. And in the request page we can send the request to the patient. Now as a patient I can accept or decline the request. In this case of course I will accept it. And now I can see in the doctor's page that we have a doctor. Let's quickly post some data. And now we can see in the home page the latest heart rate measurement. And of course we can see all the measurements in the graphs. Now let's refresh the patient's list in the doctor account. Let's select the patient. And now the doctor has access to all the information. Of course we can see the graph of the heart rates too. And we can select dates. Now let's prescribe a medicine to the patient. I will create a test medicine. And I will post the request. We can see the status of the request here. Now if you go to the prescriptions tab in, in the patient account, we can see the request and we can accept it or delete it. Now of course in the home page the medicine is there. And of course we can still delete the medicine.
The first chapter is about how to set up the project and the authentication part. Mainly, we're going to focus on how to create the API in the Node.js environment. And then later, we're going to create the register page and the login page. First of all, let's create a folder and I will name it API. Now let's create the vid up to. We're going to select React and JavaScript. Now let's cd into our API folder and type npm install. This command will create the package.json file. Now let's create the server file and I'm gonna paste the dependencies and the dev dependencies too. Now let's type npm install in order to install our packages. I'm gonna add the script too so we can start our dev server too. And of course we need the type property and we're gonna put module. CD into our frontend to and type npm install. Import express from express. We're gonna need Prisma session store for our sessions. And express session too. Of course we need course and now let's create a folder so we can define our Prisma client. Let's import Prisma and create the app. We're gonna need the port and we need to initialize the Prisma client too. Set up course and now we're gonna set up the sessions. I'm gonna paste all the properties and for the store, we're gonna use the Prisma session store. And of course, we're gonna pass the Prisma client. And finally, we're gonna listen to the port. Now let's create our docker file. From node latest, we define the work tier. We're gonna copy the package.json, run npm install, and we're gonna expose on port 3000. Of course, we're gonna need the docker ignore file too. Now let's go into our client application. We need the server property and we're gonna watch for file changes. Now we are ready to create the docker file. From node latest, we define our work tier. Copy our package, run npm install, and we're gonna expose the application. Of course, we need the docker ignore file here too. And now we're ready to create the docker compose file. In the docker compose file we have three services, the database, which is a Postgres image, the API service, which is the express API,
and we have the front end too, which is the V tab. Now we can type Docker Compose up to test the Docker Compose file, and we're gonna wait to fetch all the packages and the images. In the meantime, let's create our schema. Of course, we need the session, the role of the user, and the user role. Let's type npx prisma generate to generate the client. And let's define our user data. In the Docker application, we can see all the services. Now let's type npx prisma migrate to create the migration. Here I will paste database URL from our Docker Compose file. And let's try again. Now the migration is successful. Let's test our endpoint. And here you can see everything is working perfectly. Now let's start by creating our folders. We need the controllers, folder, services and routes. In the services we're gonna create an account services folder too. And here we're going to define our services, the register service, the login service, the who am I service, which uh, returns the current user. And the logout service. In the controller, we're gonna create a file and I will name it accountcontroller.js and here we're gonna import all the services. Now let's create a middleware folder too. And add a validate body.js file. Of course, we're gonna need some schemas too. Let's create a folder named account schemas. And create a new file register schema.js. I'm gonna import the Zod and user role from Prisma client. The register schema will be a Zod object with email, first name, last name, password, and the role. We're gonna export the schema. And now let's create the validate body middleware. The validate request body will return a function and we're gonna save parse the schema. If there are no errors, we're gonna go straight to the root. And if there are some errors, we're gonna send the errors to the client. And of course, we need to export it. Now in the register service, we're gonna import the Prisma client, bcrypt, and we're gonna create the service. The service is an asynchronous function. 
we're gonna check if the email exists. If it doesn't, we're gonna create the password, we're gonna hash it, and we're gonna create the user. Now in the account controller, we're gonna import the register service. And we're going to define the register function here. In the register function, we're going to await the register service. And of course, we're going to export the register function. Now into the account routes, we're going to import everything from the account controller. We're going to need the validate request body middleware. And of course, router from Express. We're going to define our route. And we're going to pass the schema into the validate request button function. Now into the server.js file, we're going to import the account routes. Now there are some errors here. I forgot to export some functions. And now we're able to access the register function from the controller. Finally, we're gonna use the account routes. Here you can see I'm testing the endpoint in Postman. Account created successfully. And if we don't send all the fields, it returns some errors. Now let's create our login service. Of course we need a schema. We're gonna import so then we will define our schema file. We need email and password. And now let's export the schema. Now let's define our service. We're gonna check if the user exists. And we're gonna check the password. If the password is correct, we're gonna assign the user ID to the session. Now into the controller we're gonna import the login service and we're gonna use it. And of course we need to export the login function. In the account routes we're gonna import the schema and we're gonna define the new route. I have an error here. I forgot to import the login service. Here you can see invalid credentials. If we change the email, it returns the user ID. If we don't send the password, it sends the password is required. Now let's create our logout service. If the session exists, we're going to destroy the session.
if it doesn't the user is not logged in and of course we're gonna catch an error if it exists now let's export our logout service we're gonna go to account controller of course import it and we will create the function and of course export it now into our account roots we are able to access the new function and we will create our new endpoint now let's test it we're gonna use a post a request and we're gonna use the lockout endpoint here you can see logged out and not logged in finally we need to create a who am i service import prisma and let's define the service but before that we're gonna create a middleware this middleware we're gonna name it requires soft if there is a session it allows to move forward with the request if there isn't a session we're gonna return you're not logged in Now let's define the who am I service. We're gonna find the current user in the database and we're gonna return some fields. With the current user, we're gonna return the auth property too. Now we're gonna do the same thing again into the uncount controller. We're gonna define the who am I function and we're gonna export it. Now let's create the new endpoint and the auth functionality mainly is completed now. Here you can see all the endpoints in Postman application. Here I have an error, we forgot to import requires auth. And in order to access the who am I endpoint we're gonna use this middleware now let's start our setup of our react frontend you can see here our vtab is up and running so now let's uh, install our dependencies we're gonna need sas zod react model react router dom at tanstack react query react hook form and uh, at hook form resolvers We need React icons, Axios, and Dev tools for React Query. Now let's create a folder component, a folder config, pages, and hooks. And of course, we need schemas too. And finally, we need a context folder. Let's move our styles to the styles folder. And rename index to main. 
and of course we're gonna rename the app to app.scss2 let's remove everything inside the app.jsx file and let's import app.scss from styles You can see here everything is working and now let's remove everything from the CSS files. And now I'm gonna paste some default properties for our styling in the main.scss file. You can see here our styles are removed. I'm gonna paste a link to our fonts in the HTML file. Now in the app file, I'm gonna create some styles. We need some colors. We're gonna define the background of our app and some colors for specific use. And of course, we need colors for hover. And I'm gonna define a class for dark mode and I'm gonna change most of the colors. Let's import our files and we're gonna need query client provider and React query dev tools. Now let's configure our Axios instance. We're gonna need query client and Axios from Axios. Let's create our query client and create our Axios systems and of course export them. Now let's wrap our app component between the query client provider and pass the query client to the client. And of course we need the query dev tools. You can see here the dev tools. And now let's import some stuff from React Router DOM. And let's create our first queries. Let's define the who am I function. And I'm gonna query the who am I endpoint with Axios and I will return the data. If there is an error, I'm going to return north false. Now let's define our custom hook. We are going to use the use query hook for our React query. And I'm going to pass a key named me. And I'm going to define the stale time to infinity. Retry false. And the query function is the who am I. On error, we're gonna return the error. Let's export the hook and import it to the app component. Here you can see I can call our hook. And we're getting auth false because we're not logged in. In this chapter, we're gonna create protected routes. Let's create our router component with the create browser router hook. And inside here, we can define the path of our login page. And we can pass an element. Let's call our use who am I hook. And for now our element will say just login.
we need to pass the router to the router provider component. Now let's create some components. I will create a global spinner. And I will create a CSS file for this component too. And we're gonna export via the index.js file. We're gonna use the global spinner in multiple components. Let's import the styles. I'm gonna copy and paste most of the styles and HTML. Here you can see the styling. And here you can see the HTML. If the request isn't loading and the user is logged in, we're gonna navigate it to home. But if it's loading, we're gonna show the global spinner. Else, if it's finished loading and he isn't logged in, we're gonna navigate him to the login page. Here I mistyped the CSS file and finally you can see because we are not logged in we are in the login page. Now let's define our home route. If the fetching of the user is loading, we're gonna show global spinner. If the auth property is false, we're gonna navigate him to login page. Else, we're gonna show him the home page. Here you can see the app navigates us straight to login because the auth property is false. Now let's start by creating our login page. We're gonna create a file login.jsx and login.module.scss and of course an index file. We're gonna export the login page in the index file and finally we're gonna import the login page in the app.jsx file. Here you can see it works. Now let's create our login hook. We need to pause to the login endpoint with Axios.
and we're going to define our use login hook with the help of the use mutation hook from react query the mutation function is login and on success we're going to refresh our mic query key which is the who am i fetch function and we're going to return the data Let's export the use login hook. And now I'm going to define the logout hook too. We're going to pause to the logout endpoint. And I'm going to define the use logout hook with the use mutation hook. On success, we're going to set the query data of the me query key to auth false. And on error, we're going to do the same thing. Finally, we're going to create the register function and we're going to post with access to the register endpoint. If there is an error, we're going to throw the response data message property. And now let's define the use register hook. The mutation function is registered and on success we're gonna invalidate the query with the me query key. And of course let's export it. Let's create a constant me key string. And I'm gonna use this variable now. Now let's create some more components. We need uh, form inputs. I'm gonna create a file named bikinputs.jsx. We need the styles file. And now I'm gonna paste all the properties to the bikinputs.jsx file. Here is the remaining HTML and the register properties for the react hook form package let's define some default properties and let's export the file i'm gonna create my logo component here we need, of course, the JSX file and the module SCSS style file. And I'm gonna paste all the HTML and the styling. And in the context folder, I'm gonna create a theme provider. Let's import create context, use state, use effect, and use context from React and export our theme context. Our theme context will contain the mode and the set mode. Now in the theme provider, we're gonna use the use state hook for the mode. And in the use effect hook, we're gonna set the mode to true if the preferred color scheme in your browser is dark. 
and I'm gonna create a custom hook to use the context. Let's export everything. And let's wrap our app component with the theme provider component. Now inside the app component we are able to access the theme. Let's import the use theme hook. And we need mode. If the mode is true we are gonna assign the dark mode class to the div. That will change all the colors. Now here is my logo component. In the login component we're gonna import link. We're gonna import the use login hook and the use who am I. We need use form from React hook form and Zod resolver too. And of course, we're gonna import the styles, the input we just created, and the logo. And finally, the global spinner. Let's create a button component too. We need the JSX file, the module file, and the index file. Let's export the button. And let's create a small loading spinner. The implementation of those components doesn't really matter, you can do everything you want. The important parts are the queries and the API. Now I'm gonna paste the imports and the HTML and we need size and color as properties. Let's paste the styles for the container class and keyframes for the animation. Let's import the loading spinner to the button component. I'm gonna paste all the properties. Children type color, width, height, margin, align, size, on click, multiple stuff. And I'm gonna paste all the HTML properties. I'm gonna return a link if the is link property is true and the button if it's false. And now I'm gonna paste all the styles for the button. Now let's import button to the login page.
and I get an error about the theme context. So I'll need to remove an export. Here everything is working properly. I'm gonna keep the top export. Now let's create our first schema. Uh, it's about the login. Let's import Zod. And we need an email and a password. Let's export the schema. We're gonna use the schema to validate the inputs in the text boxes. Let's import the schema. And I will create a state for the remember me checkbox. Let's call our use login hook. And I need the mutate, the is loading, the is error and the error property. And of course I need the use whoami hook too. Now let's create our form. The resolver is the Zod resolver and, we, and I'm gonna pass the schema. If you don't know how to use the use form hook from react hook form, you can go to their docs. They explain everything clear. Now let's start with our container. If some queries are loading, I'm gonna show the global spinner. And I will create the div element with a class of form. And next to the form, we're gonna have the logo. Here you can see our logo. And now I'm gonna paste all the styles. Now I need an inner div. Here is the message. And now I will create the actual form container. I need the form wrapper and the form. On submit, I'm gonna call the handle submit. And inside the handle submit, I'm gonna pass the login mutation. Now let's create our inputs and I'm gonna register them to the use form hook. And we need some options for the checkbox and a link for the forgot password path. And I'm gonna create a button for the actual login. And a link for the register path. Here I have an error. Let's fix it. Let's import the styles to the big input.
And finally, here is our final styling. I'm gonna test the form here. It says Inval credentials. In the network tab, if we throttle our internet speed, you can see the global spinner. Now the inputs are valid and we are in. In the app.jsx file, I can access the data of the user. Let's change the first name in the Prisma Studio. And you can see it will also change in the React application if we refetch the data. Now let's do some testing. I'm gonna use the use logout hook and I'm gonna import the button. Let's create a div and add the button. On click, we're gonna log out. Here you can see it works. I got a 404 because I went to the forgot password page. If we type the credentials right, we should be able to log in again. If we log in and refresh, the app will redirect us to the home page. In this part of the video, we're gonna create the register in the account deletion API. Let's go to our API folder and go to services. Here I will create a new file and then I will name it deleteService.js. I'm gonna import Prisma. And I'm gonna define the delete account service. Now we'll put the code in the try catch block. And I'm gonna export the service. We're gonna do prisma.user.delete where the ID is equal to the user ID of the session. And we're gonna return the account delete successfully. Now let's import the service to the controller. And I will create a function delete. And we're gonna await the service. Let's export the function. And now we are able to call the function in the roots. Let's create our endpoint router.delete. It requires authentication, and we are gonna use the delete function. Let's test the endpoint. Everything is good.
We forgot to call rec.session.destroy. Okay, everything looks good. So now we can continue with the register page. Let's create the register.jsx file, the sas file and the index file. Let's import the page to the app component. And we're gonna use it in the register path. Here is the register page. And I'm gonna copy the logo component. Let's import the styles and the logo. Let's import the input from form inputs and import the button. We're gonna import the link, the use form and the Zod resolver too. And of course the global spinner. Let's create our schema for the register. Let's import sod and we're gonna define our schema. It requires an email, a first name, a last name, password, confirm password. and the role of the user. If the passwords do not match, it will throw an error. Let's import the register schema. Let's fix the error here. It's global spinner with a capital G. Now let's import the use who am I and the use register hook. Let's use the use register hook and the use who am I hook. Now let's start creating our styling and our HTML in the register component. We're gonna use the form and the logo. Let's apply some styles. I pasted all of them. You can see them here. And here is the register page. Now let's create a message. And the form container. The form action is submit and on submit I will pass the register function in the handle submit hook. Now I will paste all the inputs. 
the name the email the password the confirm password and the role for the user And we need a button to sign up, a link to the sign-in page and we're going to render a div element if there is an error. Here you can see the form. And I will render the global spinner if we are waiting a response from the server. Here I fixed the register typo. And you can see here we registered successfully. All the inputs are validated. and the registration is successful now let's create a new file and we will name it accountqueries.js let's import query client access use mutation and use query and create a delete account function we are gonna send and delete request to the me endpoint and we will define the use delete account hook it will use the use mutation hook and, and we're gonna pass the delete account mutation function on success we're gonna set off to false let's copy the constant variable and let's export the hook now go to the app.jsx file and import the use delete account hook let's use it and we need the mutate property we will create a button and on click we will delete the account let's style it a bit we're gonna use some margin top here you can see the users and we just deleted the account you can see it in the prisma studio too and on the right side, you can see the requests. Let's log in again to the second account. And let's delete it. In this part of the video, we're gonna use an access interceptor to catch the session expiration. If the session is expired, we have to kick the user out of the application. Let's create a new folder. I will name it layout and I will create a JSX file, a style file and an index file. We'll use the layout component to better structure our application. 
let's export default the layout component and i'm gonna use the children as props let's import the styles and we will render the children between the div element let's import the layout from components and let's create a new folder and we will call it home let's create jsx file and import button import the hooks from both queries and the use delete account too we're gonna remove the test here and i'm gonna copy those from here to our home page let's copy those hooks too and they use who am i hook too now let's import home and we're going to define the path for the home let's test the home page first we need to register because we deleted both the accounts and we can see the home page is working let's log out and i'm gonna use the layout component and i'm gonna paste the outlet between that layout let's test the login again okay and now go to the home page here i can access more data i will render the last name too here are all the properties and i will show the user role too now let's go back to the layout and i will add the class name of container let's style the container now the information are centered let's create a style file for the home page and an index file export default our home file and add some styles let's import the styling here all right everything is working let's paste the buttons between the development and we're gonna do display flex mm. 
legs wrap wrap and gap one rem. Justify content center and align item center. Now everything is centered. Now let's add the is loading property to the use logout and the is loading property in the use delete account. Let's throttle the internet speed and here you can see the loading spinner. Let's fix that. Everything is working perfectly. Let's log in back again. And create a new folder. I will name it Interceptor. And I will create a JSX file, interceptor.jsx. Let's create the component and an index file. Let's export it. And import Axios. Now let's import the interceptor to the app component and I will put it between the layout. Let's define an authorized to 401 and create the interceptor. If the status of the error is unauthorized, we're gonna put the logic in there. We're gonna set the me query key to auth false. And we're gonna remove all the queries except the me query key. And finally, we're gonna return promise reject error. Now we need to clean up interceptor too. Now, if we delete the sessions. and we request some data, it will kick us out of the application. In this part, we're gonna create the navbar as you can see here in the video. It's basically a side navbar in the desktop and the simple standard navigation bar in the mobile view.
let's go to the layout component and I'm gonna add two more properties navbar and mobile navbar let's change those properties in the CSS file and I'm gonna create the new folder and we will name it navbar and I will create the basic files the index, the JSX and the SAS style file Let's import use state here, the styles, the nav link from React Router DOM, and a couple of icons. Let's import the use logout hook too, and the global spinner. Let's export the navbar from the index file. And import the navigation bar in the app JSX file. Pass the navbar component to the navbar prop in the layout. Here you can see the navbar. Now I'm gonna use the use state hook set nav active, and I'm gonna use the use logout hook too. Let's create a nav URL component. We have the URL, an icon, a title, at the top index as props. Let's create a list item, and inside we're gonna use the nav link component. I'm gonna paste some variables. And I'm gonna add some styling. Now let's use the nav container class name, the nav big and the nav small. Now let's start creating the navigation bar. We need the div element and inside the div element we're gonna put a button to open the navigation bar, the navigation with all the nav URLs. As you can see here it's working. And we need a button for logout. And we're gonna render the global spinner if we're logging out. Let's add some more styling. If you want to create the exact navigation bar, you can pause the video and see all the code. As you can see here, I'm copy and pasting most of the styles because it doesn't really matter. Here you can see the full navigation bar. Now let's pass the role of the patient to the navbar. And now I will create the mobile navigation bar. Create the index.js file, the mobile navbar.jsx, and the styles file.
most of the code will be the same as the desktop navigation bar. Let's pass the mobile navbar component to the mobile navbar prop. Now I'm gonna paste all the icons and the styles. We need navlink. And I'm gonna create a new context. I'm gonna create the mobile nav provider so we can close the mobile nav from anywhere we want without passing the props here i'm creating the context very fast and i'm gonna export everything now i'm gonna use this context in the layout component Let's import it. And we're gonna wrap all the properties. Here I'm fixing a typo. Now let's continue. Let's use the use mobile nav from the context. I'm gonna paste the nav URL. And I'm gonna create a container. Let's create a button. I'm going to paste all the nav URLs and I'm going to define the role in props. We need the background div element, the black element. And if we click it, it will close the navigation bar. Now let's create a shared SSS file. I'm going to paste again all the variables and now I'm going to import the shared file. Here I'm pasting the styles for the navlink. And for the ATA component. And we're gonna do hover and focus too. We define style for the span and the SVG. For the button. And for the background too. Now let's import the use mobile nav hook. And we're gonna create a button inside the home page so we can control the navigation bar for now. On click, I'm gonna toggle the is open variable. Here you can see everything is working. Now let's create the inner navigation bar.
let's create a new folder i will name it page layout and inside of that we will create the page layout component let's pass children as props and we will create the style file and the index file let's export the component and import it to the app JSX file I'm gonna wrap the outlet with the page layout now I'm gonna pass the user as props and import the styling let's create the page layout inner and here we will put the top navbar and the children inside the children rubber development here will be the top navigation bar and let's define our styling for the page layout component let's do an outline here is the top nav and let's create a navigation we will need the jsx file and we're gonna pass the user as props let's import the navbar and let's delete the nav tag and pass the user let's test it ok renders and let's create a styling file now i'm gonna paste a small logo component here is all the code and i'm gonna import the icons the styles and the logo the use theme hook the use mobile nav hook the link from React Router DOM and the use logout. The use who am I hook and the global spinner. Now I'm gonna use all the hooks and I will create a container. Inside of that, we have two parts the top part and the bottom part. In the top part, we're gonna do the log container and the button to open and close the navigation bar. The bottom part will contain the search functionality, the profile button, and the theme toggle button. Let's create a search input. and a small search mobile button now let's do the theme change button and the notifications button and finally the profile we need the user first name next to the button and we're gonna render the global spinner if we are logging out let's paste our styling the top and bottom the log container
the mobile FA bars icon. Some media screens. Here is the button to open the navigation bar. Now we need the search container and the search wrapper. Let's add that variable quickly. And we need the search inner class name too. I'm gonna paste all the styling here. The input. And here is the mobile search button. Now let's continue with the other elements, the theme container. Here it is. Now the notifications. And finally, the profile. Here is the final result. Later we're gonna add the user submenu if we click our profile on the top right of the navbar. Here is the light mode too.